welcome you to our session. Uh, this is a new session we've never done before. We don't repeat our, our sessions anyway. But today we have Sherith Ramaswamy here. She is senior e-learning evangelist at Adobe. And she's going to help us get smarter about strategic growth and implementing a continuous learning culture using Adobe Captivate. So uh, the, many of you are Captivate users. Put in the, in the chat for me. Let me know, are you a Captivate user or not? Okay. And uh, while you did that, we'll go on. I'm Gary Van Antwerp, as I said, and I want to thank you for joining our community. Lots of Captivate users. Great. Okay. Heidi, no, but you'll learn something today, you and Stephanie and some others that this is new to. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of webinars coming up. Uh, also, you can look at the calendar. You'll see about 50 of them already scheduled through the end of the year. Uh, and I add more every day as, as quickly as my assistant, Keith, can set them up. We're adding more. But we have some great ones coming right up here. Uh, tomorrow, Margie Malden will be here and talk about when feedback flops. So if you have to coach people or if you are training managers and supervisors how to coach, this is a session you want to attend to because, yeah, we're all afraid that our feedback might flop, might not uh, be welcomed the way we'd like it to be. And Margie's going to talk to us about some strategies for that. And then the wonderful Sheila B. Robinson uh, will be here on elevating your training with powerful questions. We've got about 1,800 of you registered uh, for that already, but there's room for more. And then my friend Ellen Finkelstein, I asked to come back and uh, do the session on creating learner-friendly handouts so learners can listen instead of wrestling with their handouts and so forth. And uh, uh, we have several sessions uh, about handouts lately uh, because I wanted to get several people's input. So you'll see another session uh, um, by Richard Goring, but he's not going to cover the same territory. And Rick Altman is going to do another session. And again, he's going to give you some different input. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see. And so, Pamela, uh, I'm sorry that there's no spell check and no find and replace. Oh, well. Uh, and Sherith is going to be back with us on May 14th. And she's going to talk about accessibility and 508 compliance in Adobe Captivate. So creating your sessions, you, you Captivate users, that's going to be very valuable. So I'll put this, uh, this button back up at the end of the session, and you'll be able to register for that. Okay. Just one last thing here before we get started. Uh, I mentioned the Choice Awards before. You'll be able to uh, to vote on the Choice Awards. Uh, those are all determined by you, our members. And when I put this back up later on, you can click that red button there, and you will be entered to win a $100 U.S. Bank Visa gift card. So it's important enough that I'm in a, kind of interrupting uh, what we're doing right now just to make sure you all know about that. And, uh, and I hope you'll vote uh, like uh, so many, a few uh, other thousand of our members do. Uh, we want to thank Adobe Captivate for uh, sponsoring the session and, and sponsoring actually our series of webinars. Adobe is a big partner in the series and Captivate is uh, one of the topics that we that we tackle monthly. Uh, you can, uh, at the end of the session here, whenever you like, you can click that free trial button and you'll be able to get started with a free trial. So those of you who said, no, I'm not a Captivate user, Heidi and, and uh, Mob and, and Stephanie, then you can go ahead and, and give it a try, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get started now with strategic growth, implementing a continuous learning culture with Adobe Captivate. And I want to welcome back our friend, Sherith Ramaswamy. Sherith, good to see you again. Thank you for coming. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Gary, for the wonderful introduction. And I'm thrilled to be presenting today on a, on a topic which is very close to my heart. And um, I, I, I I think some of you may be wondering what has content development got to do with continuous learning? I mean, these are two different things. Uh, yes, uh, Adobe Captivate is mostly associated with content development at a very granular and, uh, uh, you know, at the very tactical level. And here we are talking about uh, a very strategic topic that is continuous learning and, you know, what's the connection between the two. Uh, so let me let me explain. Uh, so Carrie, can I get started? Uh, is there anything else you wanted to say before I get started with this? No, I think I've said too much already. So you go right ahead, Sherrod. <laughs> okay, thank you. So um, see, when we are talking about uh, uh, the 
continuous learning. It's it's very intuitive, very obvious, continuous learning. What's there to learn about it? Or why do we need to understand what a continuous learning culture is all about? Uh, and in this presentation, I'm going to focus on these three main parts. The first one is continuous learning seems obvious, but let's try to understand and see how whether our organizations map to this, are we following it? Uh, and then how do we, if we are not, how do we cultivate a continuous learning mindset? And then finally, how do we go about achieving the goals and uh, achieving the continuous learning strategy with Adobe Captivate? So the first question I'd like to ask all of you is, what is your organization's learning culture? I'd like you to take a moment and reflect on it. There are, there are various styles. Uh, you have the traditional um, learning culture where there are a set number of uh, trainings and people just go. So it's a you know uh, one-stop shop. You just go take those trainings and it ends right there. Uh, the other one is where a, a company um, you know, focuses mostly on compliance oriented trainings. They do it because it's mandatory, they, it, because it's a rule. Um, and some are performance oriented. Some want to inculcate and develop a culture of innovation, want to uh, uh, have uh, some are collaborative in nature where you know there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning, informal learning going on, some where it's self-directed. So I mean, depending on the organization's uh, culture, depending on the budget which is available, depending on the resources which are available, there are all these various flavors of uh, learning cultures all around us. So I'd like you to take a moment and see where do you fit in. And irrespective of where you fit in, I mean, all these can map to and work towards developing a continuous learning culture. So this is an environment where learning is not a one-time activity, but it's an ongoing process. And there are various ways to achieve this. And in fact, all the different types we looked at in the earlier slide, they all come together and they map towards achieving a continuous learning culture. So uh, when we look at you know, what constitutes a continuous learning culture, there's learning all around. It's the top priority. I mean, you can sense that, you know, the investment uh, in in learning, the belief, the top management, uh, you know, in the leadership team, uh, are they involved in uh, learning initiatives? What's, what's the culture? Uh, is it incentivized? Uh, are people motivated and encouraged to take trainings? Uh, is it a collaborative experience? And does the learning stop? So in a continuous learning culture, the learning doesn't stop. So I've simplified all the various uh, th theories around just to let you know that when if an organization uh, uh, has a continuous learning culture, then all these are uh, in effect in that particular organization. So, I mean, uh, why do we need a continuous learning? It, it drives innovation, um, employees are engaged, uh, there's a lot of skill development uh, which happens and employees are motivated, it helps retain employees, a lot of reasons uh, why. So, and how do we go about cultivating this culture and this mindset? So, uh, like with all um, instructional design uh, uh, principles and as well as uh, learning plan strategies, etc., you start with the needs analysis, right? You want to assess what the current state of the organization is, after which you set some clear objectives as to what you want to achieve, uh, ensure you get leadership buy-in, and then put together a lot of learning opportunities for learners to continuously go to and learn from and encourage a lot of self-directed learning and promote knowledge sharing and reward and recognize uh, your uh, learners and then evaluate and adjust. So these are the high level buckets and let's look at each one of these as to how we can go about achieving this. So the reason I'm going through this is just to give you some context here before we come down to the weeds again and see how our content development strategy can achieve all of this. How, how can our content development strategy work towards achieving this? And I think I just lost my document. Uh, let me try uh, uploading it again. Uh, 
All right. It'll take a few moments to uh, for that to upload, but you can all look at your uh, at your handout uh, to uh, follow along with Sherith also. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but uh, hmm. if we have to do that again, I'll just share my screen because I have that's it a, open on my screen. That's a new. That's a new glitch, isn't it? I, I, yeah. I don't recall that ever happening before. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, while we wait for the document to upload, uh, I just want to explain that, you know, all this is very closely related, right? Uh, you know, an organization's goals, the learning strategy, the learning goals, and then the content strategy and the content development strategy as well. They all need to be aligned because if you're just churning out content and putting it out there where it doesn't meet the organization's goals, it doesn't meet the, the uh, L&D goals, then it's a waste. Uh, you know, you're just um, uh, uh, using your effort in the wrong direction. So, um, so over here, just to set the context to see then how Captivate and uh, how the content development strategy aligns with all of this. So you can already see, you know, uh, even from a content development perspective, we usually do a needs analysis, right? Uh, we identify, but at a more granular level, the needs analysis we are doing there is with respect to that specific course or that specific topic that we are developing. Uh, whereas um, here, this is at a, organization level, when we are doing a needs analysis over here, we are identifying what are all the skill sets required in the organization. And then you evaluate and assess all the employees and see where the gaps are. You know, uh, do they have the skill sets which are required for these various goals? Are there any additional business goals uh, which will be coming up which the organization needs to be prepared for. So in which case, then it becomes a learning goal uh, to build that skill set within the organization and develop content which will and training which will help the employees work towards that business goal. So, so it's very important uh, uh, the, uh, to ensure that uh, you do a thorough needs analysis over here because any, any learning strategy that you're putting together should be aligned with the organization's goals and the current status of the skill sets in the organization. And in addition to all of this, it, it also helps to conduct some surveys and interviews to understand what the learning preferences are, needs are. And this varies from group to group. So you may have observed, I'm preaching to the choir over here. Uh, so uh, different groups have different learning styles. Some prefer interactive, engaging uh, trainings. Some prefer self-directed. So just give me the content. I will learn by myself. I prefer to do it on my own, at my own pace and time. And there are other teams and groups which like to engage in a live environment, in a, uh, in a classroom environment, interact. And some of them like it in micro module formats uh, where it's it's in bits and pieces and where they can learn on the go. So there are all these different learning needs and preferences. And it's, it's, it's useful to understand all this before you begin uh, with your uh, strategy. And uh, the clear objectives, you should have measurable objectives. I mean, this is again a no-brainer. This is something you have to do for every task that you want to accomplish. How are you going to measure yourself? And over here, these are some sh uh, common goals which I thought will be useful and are, are measurable because sometimes uh, learning uh, ROI can be a little hard to uh, Assess. So over here, increase employee skill proficiency. So doing a thorough needs analysis, identifying the gaps, uh, providing the training, and then evaluating your employees and seeing, you know, has there been a change? Uh, that is a clear objective to try to achieve. Enhancing employee engagement, feedback from your trainings. That's very useful in understanding if the uh, the employee uh, feels that they are involved, they're engaged, and uh, that the organization is investing in their development. Uh, improving employee retention, this is another easy metric to track. You know, uh, So uh, learning and development initiatives do play a big role in um, employee retention. 
and uh, boosting the organizational agility, again, tied in with the needs analysis that you do uh, by ensuring that the organization is prepared for new trends in the industry and upcoming um, and changing business goals. And uh, developing leadership pipeline. Do we have enough uh, leaders being mentored and trained so that uh, you know succession planning becomes easier and so on and so forth? And enhancing customer satisfaction. You know, uh, again, uh, how how the CSATs goes? Uh, are they improving after you have delivered and trained the sales and customer facing teams? So there are some easy ways to measure the return on investment on training, and it's important to set some some clear objectives um, in order to ensure that uh, the continuous learning strategy that you're about to implement uh, is successful or not. So going to uh, securing leadership binds, and, and, and there are, here are some tips on, you know, how we can uh, secure leadership buy-in and how, because it starts from the top. So when employees see leaders actively participating in learning initiatives, where the leaders themselves are taking training, it, it stresses the importance of, you know, uh, how uh, uh, important training is to the organization. Uh, being given the flexibility in work schedules to attend trainings, that's going to improve and encourage continuous learning. Uh, having enough budget and resources, because when we're talking about continuous learning initiative, as we saw earlier, there are various ways to uh, achieve and uh, implement a continuous learning uh, plan. Um, and also, you know, having leaders available as mentors and coaches motiv motivates a lot of employees to reach out and get trained. And uh, recognizing, rewarding employees um, uh, who demonstrate this commitment, and that's another major motivation to, uh, you know, uh, continuously learn. And also, leaders communicating this value through regular community, through the town hall meetings, that's, again, very important to develop and build this culture of continuous learning. And uh, moving on to the various types of learning opportunities. So if you look at organizations, uh, you know, I can name a few. We have Microsoft, we have Google, we have uh, uh, Facebook, there are so many organizations and all these are all the you know, successful organizations that we see today. They all have a continuous learning culture. And if you look at the various learning opportunities that the employees of these organizations get, they are spread across all these different types of learning opportunities. You know, they have training programs, they have workshops, they have webinars, they have uh, content libraries, which uh, consists of uh, online courses, podcasts, ebooks. Uh, they have peer-to-peer -peer informal learning uh, uh, setups. They have mentorship programs. They have knowledge sharing sessions, the weekly uh, you know, brown bag sessions, etc. So all these opportunities are available. So employees can go to any of these. So there's this variety of learning opportunities to choose from. And this, again, encourages a culture of continuous learning. And uh, Promoting knowledge sharing, you know, you need to facilitate this. You need to make sure that uh, employees can also share their exp expertise inside uh, the, the corridor conversations, the cooler conversations. Is there a, a more structured way to make sure that this is scalable? And uh, we know that these corridor conversations are so, so um, informative and so uh, helpful. Uh, so a lot of organizations are actually formally adopting and trying to incorporate informal learning into their framework. So ensuring that you have the collaborative tools, ensuring that you have the online forums and you're motivating and incentivizing employees to share their expertise is again uh, very important uh, to achieve a continuous uh, learning culture. And then uh, providing feedback and recognition. You're in ensuring that uh, you, you discuss an employee's um, learning and uh, 
um, you know, their skills uh, during the regular performance reviews and identify gaps and put learning plans in place so that the learner, the employees can go ahead and try to achieve that. Uh, you know, so that's important, providing feedback, identifying gaps and acknowledging their accomplishments, uh, giving them certificates, badges, having a leaderboard, uh, learning wall of fame, uh, giving learning awards, having leadership um, recognition, uh, financial incentives, of, of course, and also tying it in with promotion and opportunities for growth. So this, again, is an important pillar to achieving uh, continuous um, learning culture. And the, finally, evaluating and adjusting. So after doing all of this, uh, collecting feedback, analyzing the metrics and uh, you know, evaluating uh, ourselves and seeing, okay, have I met those objects that I had uh, defined earlier? Are all these learning um, objectives and are all these various learning initiatives meeting these objectives? If I'm not, then I need to course correct. I need to make adjustments and improve my strategy. So these are all the tips and uh, uh, very high level, of course, but I'm just setting the context so that, you know, I can get to uh, the actual uh, part of uh, the content strategy where, you know, you can align and see how the, the content you develop can help you with all these various uh, pillars that we just discussed. So, um, and the infrastructure and the resources, what are all the things you need to implement a continuous learning uh, strategy? So you need a learning management system. So this is the platform because ultimately with all these different learning initiatives, there's, there should be a platform where you can track and manage and have all of this. So usually a learning management system will host your classroom trainings, will host your virtual trainings, will host your online. A lot of there's a misconception, a lot of people confuse and think that a learning management system is just to host uh, web-based learning. That's not, that's incorrect. A learning management system is essentially a one-stop shop where uh, your employees, you know, if they come to your uh, to the learning management system, they should be have access and be able to sign up and register for any kind of learning initiative that you have. So it should all be there: your classroom training, your virtual training, your uh, self-paced training, all your content libraries uh, from external parties, if any. Uh, all that uh, should be there. Your peer-to-peer -peer learning initiatives that should also be there. So the learning management system should be able to support and host, manage and track all these learning initiatives. And yes, content is key because you know all this every. every Every type of learning delivery format that I just mentioned uh, needs content, right? You need content for your classroom training, you need it for your virtual trainings, you need it for your self-paced trainings, uh, even your peer-to-peer -peer learning, you know, there are snippets of content that learners share and so on and so forth. So all this content is key. So you should have some good content creation and management tools. You should have, um, virtual classrooms and web conferencing tools, especially now in this global environment and in this hybrid working environment, it's very important to uh, adopt uh, virtual training if you haven't already. And uh, knowledge sharing, collaboration tools, and of course, analytics and reporting, because ultimately you want to measure yourself and you want to see where you are and course correct if needed. So now coming to implementing a continuous learning strategy, how can we look at in building our content in a way which will make, which will help us achieve these objectives that we had uh, mentioned earlier. How do we ensure that we address the skill gaps in the organization? How do we ensure that we keep the learners engaged? How do we ensure that the courses are accessible to everybody, everyone across the organization can easily access and take these trainings? How do we motivate our employees? How do we reward our employees? So just let's, let's take a look at all of this. So uh, to begin with, uh, you know, uh, when I'm talking about self-directed uh, learning in Adobe Captivate, right, uh, we have a, a library of uh, quick start projects. Now, these are projects on a lot of uh, topics, uh, commonly uh, used topics. So if you're trying to build, if you're if you're new to online um, uh, 
courses. And if you want to quickly build, and if you're in a startup, so there are the various uh, uh, needs uh, to use a quick start uh, project. So if you're trying to quickly build a training on a certain topic, uh, you could choose from this set of um, quick start projects. And these courses have been created by our designers with a lot of interactions in them and with a lot of um, uh, creative elements in them and which can easily be used to create a quick tr a training. So you could build your repository. So once you've identified, you've done a needs analysis, you've identified uh, what are all the skill sets that are needed, uh, you can come and pick up these quick start projects from here and then edit them and customize them further to meet your organization's uh, specific needs. And then uh, we have um, a different uh, uh, features within Adobe Captivate, which will help you create engaging learning content. So, you know, use all these different features and functionality to make it more engaging. Um, add text, add images. We have an asset library, which has a whole lot of images and videos and audio files, which you can add to your courses. So you can add text and images. You can add audios, audio files. You can add video files. You can um, use interactions. There's a widget gallery with a number of pre-designed uh, widgets which you can use to create uh, very interactive and engaging uh, trainings. And then you can also create role play and scenario based learning. So this is engaging again, uh, where the learner has to, you know, uh, think through and uh, reflect on what they've learned and apply their learning and, um, uh, you know, uh, execute against and choose the options over here. So the learner is actually having to take some decisions and uh, uh, go through the training. And it's not just a one way uh, interaction over here. And then you have interactive videos that you can build in Adobe Captivate. So these are interactive videos. So it transforms uh, any video file that you may have where uh, there's just a one-way uh, dissemination of information. So you can go and embed additional slides. You can embed, uh, uh, check your knowledge uh, quiz slides in there. Uh, check your knowledge slides, not quiz, because you cannot track and score the uh, questions that you're including here. And you can make these uh, videos very interactive. Um, you can include knowledge checks. So here you want to just, you know, after a specific concept has been explained, you want uh, to have do a quick check of the learner's understanding of that concept before proceeding. You can do that. Uh, you can create formal quizzes and assessments where you can evaluate a learner's understanding of um, uh, all of this. Uh, so I see a question here with saying a place where we can see examples of the interactive videos I will be showing you how to develop and create uh, an interactive video so uh, you know you you can try it out yourself um, and then um, if you look at simulations like uh, you know creating simulations of software applications where the learner can uh, you know learn from demos can try it out with the training uh, simulations and can be assessed using the assessment simulations. And then we also have variables and conditions and advanced uh, actions, which you can use to create your own custom interactions. I will be showing you a little bit of how to do that as well. And then animations, applying animations for enhanced um, uh, visual uh, appeal and uh, downloadable certificates that you can uh, use uh, that the learner can print out. So you can see with all these different features, and there are many more, I've just listed some of them over here, with all these and the quick start projects, there's so much you can achieve. There's so much you can do to create, create content which is very engaging and which will help you uh, uh, build this culture of uh, continuous learning in your organization because ultimately it's the content which is going to motivate or engage the learner and motivate them to continue learning uh, within the organization. And in addition to all the content, uh, Within these courses, providing links to just-in-time learning resources, that's also critical and crucial because uh, once they attend a training or they take a self-paced training, and when 
in, in the course of their jobs and as they are executing and doing, performing their tasks, if they need a quick refresher, if they need a checklist to just quickly, if they need a cheat sheet to look at before preparing for a customer demo or so and so forth. Making all these resources available by linking, um, I will also show you how we can do that in Adobe Captivate. So providing this also establishes a, a culture of continuous learning, uh, mostly because uh, you know it's not just just attending the classroom, right? So as you're executing and doing your job, uh, referencing, looking back, uh, and uh, uh, using these just-in-time resources is also part of continuous learning. And enabling re reflection and recap. So, you know, uh, having the learners, giving them these modules where, you know, as they're performing their tasks after a training, reflecting on what they are doing and, you know, sharing it with their mentors. So that's another way you can uh, have learners continue to learn even after attending one of the in-person or live uh, training events, having them reflect, answer questions, and uh, make observations in their work environment and you know continue to get feedback on uh, their tasks and how they are uh, applying their learning from these trainings. That's another important way to uh, ensure that uh, there's a culture of continuous learning. And over here in Captivate, we have this um, functionality called user interactive components, which will help uh, you create these forms and create these um, uh, courses with uh, reflection exercises within them and uh, where they can uh, you can they can answer some questions do some reflection and uh, share that with their mentors uh, and of course uh, in today's uh, diverse and uh, globally dispersed uh, audiences uh, supporting multi-device learning where the learners have the flexibility to take the trainings anywhere from any device is so critical and uh, auto-responsive functionality in Captivate ensures that you do not need to resize your content. It's automatically resized, and we'll see how that is done. And also providing accessible learning material. So, uh, you know, providing accessibility, defining accessibility text for the slides and for all the components in your slides, including quizzes, including interactions, uh, uh, may, will make it uh, possible for folks uh, to, uh, who are visually impaired uh, to and have the screen reader read this out so that they can also benefit from this training. And being able to include closed captions and uh, import, export closed captions, generate a text to speech, all this uh, uh, makes the courses uh, accessible and available to a wider audience and uh, also helps them continuously learn. And finally, integrating feedback mechanisms also to the course to uh, tie it back to the evaluate and adjust, right? So uh, ensuring that uh, you gather the le learner's feedback to ensure that these courses are meeting their needs. If not, you can continue to update this. So it's very important to integrate feedback mechanisms. And this is, again, possible with the user interactive component functionality uh, in Adobe Captivate. So let's... Um, now take a look. Let's go and create and uh, um, a micro learning. So again, micro learning. This is a new trend um, with the, the current uh, learners, uh, with the current generation of learners. Uh, it's easier to engage them, easier to retain them with bite-sized nuggets of uh, information rather than, uh, you know, uh, drinking from a fire hose. Uh, so you know breaking up the same content into smaller nuggets of information and building all these elements that we just discussed, right? Ensuring that it has, it meets the goals and uh, helps the learner gain the skills which you've identified in your needs analysis, making it engaging, interactive uh, with simulations and all the other multimedia elements, quiz elements that we discussed, ensuring that there is uh, a reflection, uh, 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 there are scenarios and uh, 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 examples where, uh, where they can reflect on their learning and uh, answer questions and uh, 
upload their observations, ensuring there's a mechanism to capture feedback. So all this can be built into these small nuggets of training. And let's see how we can do that. So now I'm going to stop sharing uh, and I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen uh, just so that we can go and create a micro learning course. And let's I will be toggling between the slides that I just discussed with you and uh, seeing how that how that functionality can be implemented in Adobe Captivate. So let me uh, sh share my screen. I hope you can see my desktop. And uh, I'm going not to yet. Uh, you may have to hit it again uh, because okay. I, ch I changed uh, layouts on you. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me come back. So I'm going to share my screen. There now. we go. Oh, okay. I stopped sharing. So I think there's some delay then. Let me just wait and. I'll let you know. There you go. You're ready <laughs> okay. to go. Okay. So I'm going to launch Adobe Captivate. So for those of you who are new to the new Adobe Captivate, I'll just quickly walk you through this uh, screen again. This is the welcome screen. Um, and over here, we if you're creating a new project from scratch, you can select this. If you're creating a simulation, you can select this. And if you want to go and view the quick start projects that I referred to, um, you can select this. And you can see over here that there are a lot of uh, courses on uh, uh, you know, the many topics. Uh, so let's choose uh, from one of these. I'm going to choose, um, let's choose persuasive presentation. And, uh, you know, when I select that, it's going to uh, download all the slides in that course and it's going to uh, create a project for me. And I can just go and update it and uh, see it. So, so you can see over here, it has added uh, the entire course. And uh, it, each of these slides has uh, interesting interactions already built into it. So over here, this is the introduction slides, a slide. And then um, this is, again, uh, uh, another content slide um, over here. It's got buttons. It's got images. It's got text. And uh, it's been. Uh, presented in an engaging and creative manner uh, where the learner has to keep clicking those buttons to move ahead. And then um, it comes here where the learner now, there's an interaction uh, waiting for them. And here they have to select from an option and uh, see. Uh, uh, and so I would say this is again, a kind of a reflection of uh, you know their learning. And before they go deeper into the topic, you're trying to have them try this activity. So please go through these quick start projects. You can see different styles um, in, um, uh, and manners in which content has been developed. Uh, if, if, you, uh, if, if your topic is not persuasive presentation, no worries. You can still use these slides. You can just copy the slide and add it to your presentation if you like the style which has been used um, at no additional effort at all because um, uh, you don't need to go and add all these individually. You can just go and edit the content over here and uh, reuse this uh, slide uh, designs. Sure. Um, you can uh, yes, just a, a quick question on that topic. Uh, Bill asked, do these courses have transitions and motion pre-built in? Yes, these are all pre-built in. And Thank let's you. see what it looks like. Let's go to the preview. And uh, so these are all uh, completely uh, uh these are complete courses, so there's nothing additional that you need to do unless you want to customize the content and the images. So over here, you can see uh, when I select this, the animations have been added and uh, uh, you can see that the content, uh, once you change it, you will see the buttons have been uh, 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 coded and uh, over here. You can see there is um, this uh, forced navigation. I want the learner to click through this and um, see this before they continue. And 
and you can see over here the force navigation has been enabled so this again um, you can see this that is a nice way to uh, present that topic and here we are coming to a part a section where the learner is asked to look at so there's a combination of a carousal widget over here which is one of the pre-designed interactions which we offer as part of the product. And there's also another content block here, uh, which is a user interactive component, which asks you to evaluate David and Priya's presentation and then provide your feedback. So let's take a look at Priya's presentation. And then uh, based on what I saw, uh, I'm going to choose Priya and I'm going to submit. And um, interesting choice, this feedback which is being offered. Uh, and that is, again, uh, another important way to uh, engage your learner. So, uh, so you can see there are so many styles um, which are being used within these courses itself. And uh, uh, there are a lot of these courses. So I would re recommend you go through all these um, courses, see the slides which uh, look interesting to you, which have some very unique and uh, nice interactions. And uh, you can just reuse uh, these um, to uh, build your courses. So going back to uh, Captivate, um, so uh, this is how you can use the Quick Start projects either from the uh, launch page or the home page. Uh, from the left, you have the Quick Start projects. Or if you're looking for a specific slide, uh, you can go to the asset library and you have the slide templates here as well. So if you don't want the entire course, you just want a specific, you can just browse through all these different styles. These are from the Quick Start projects itself, but they've all been combined and made available here. So you can just select from the asset library. So this is another way to access your Quick Start project slides or use a, a existing course uh, slide to quickly create uh, your courses. Um, so let me now come to um, uh, the creating engaging learning content. So let's uh, let me open uh, this um, script that I have. Uh, and if you're interested, I can just share it with you at the end of this. This is just some content I put to just help me copy paste and build this training. But if you'd like to try whatever I'm showing over here, I will share this at the end of this uh, session so that you can uh, you can try it whatever you saw. So uh, let me go and uh, create a new project over here. I'm going to create a, a blank project. Now over here, I'm going to create a micro learning uh, course. I'm going to use the modern scrolling format. Uh, so all my content is on one slide. And when I publish this course, the learner, if the learner is taking the training from a mobile device, they don't need to click to navigate between the different sections of the course. They can just scroll through all the content. So, um, so let's look at this. So I'll, let me try to include all these elements that we are seeing over here into this micro learning uh, and see, you know, how uh, uh, it can be created and captivate. So I'm going to. Um, first add uh, a title uh, so that will be a text uh, so i'm going to go and i'm going to add this text block over here so this is going to be my title so that would be mastering constructive feedback so i'm going to add that over here i do not want uh, this text to appear so i'm just going to disable that from the component section. And then the next thing I want to add an image and add this text. So I'm going to now add an image block. These are the different media blocks. So you can see there are blocks for videos, there are blocks for single characters, for scenarios, for quotes, for SVGs. I would encourage you to try all of this. I'm going to choose the image block. Uh, and even with the image block, there are different styles over here. I can choose from if I want to change uh, and adjust the look and feel and the design of the image block, I can choose from the right. Uh, and to add an image, I can either choose from the asset library. Again, I just showed you the slide templates, but there are also assets that you can, uh, images that you can choose from and add uh, to your uh, uh, course. So over here, let me choose um, an image from the asset library. I'm going to choose... Um, uh, 
I don't think this is a relevant image, but <laughs> I'm just going to keep it. Um, I'm going to remove the caption. I just want the text in there. So I'm going to copy paste this text. So you can see I'm adding image and text to my training. If you want to adjust the alignment, you can go one level higher and then just adjust the, the alignment for this particular block. Right, so we have the content over here. And now I would like to add a video to this training. So I'm going and I'm going to choose from the event video because the event video has a playback control for a micro learning because you want to ensure that it just doesn't play when the, the, the slide loads. Uh, I would advise you to use the event video option to add the video here. And I want to choose uh, something I found on YouTube. So I'm just going to uh, go and select web and I'm going to replace this with the YouTube video that I want the learner to see, uh, which is uh, a, a TED talk uh, on um, constructive feedback. Um, so I'm going to remove the title and the body over here. So this is um, how I've added a video to my course. And then I want to add an interaction. So how do I add an interaction? So I'm going to go to my widget gallery. So there are all these different ways of adding um, uh, uh, an interaction. So let's uh, choose from one of these. I'm going to choose um, from the click to reveal interaction. And over here, there are some key characteristics uh, that I want to talk about. So I'm going to include it here and I'm going to remove the body because I just want to include the title. And uh, over here, uh, oops, I just realized that there is no uh, text uh, on this. So let me choose another uh, style of interaction, which is most suitable to the content. So let me choose the flip card itself. Um, I'm going to remove this. And from the front of the flip cards, I'm going to remove the subtitle. I just want the heading. So I'm going to now copy the content over here. I'm going to do it for one so that uh, you understand how this will be done. And you can choose again from the SL library. So I'm just going to choose um, one of these images. I'm just maybe. This is the image I'd like to add. And uh, if the image doesn't show well on the flip card, you can adjust it and edit it. So you can just double click on it and it will show you what the image looks like. So I'm going to move it or expand it. There's not much I can do with this particular image. Uh, uh, so instead of having it fill, maybe I'll just have it fit into this uh, flip card and then I click save. So you can see what it looks like in all the other uh, uh, views as well. So when you're editing this image, you will notice that you can see the desktop view, you can see the tablet view, you can see the mobile view, uh, because this content is being automatically, uh, it's auto responsive. So uh, in any of these devices, it it this is how the content will be automatically resized. And you can test this out as you're working through it. So once uh, we add the interactions, uh, I've added the content to the front. So to add the content to the back, I have to just click back. And over here, you will notice that the components and the configuration settings here also change as you uh, make these uh, select the back option. So here at the back, I may not want the image. I just want the text. So I'm going to add uh, the content over here. and. Uh, you can see how easy it is for me to build this. And I don't want the subtitle, so I'm removing it. So this is how you can create your interactivity, uh, add interactivity. So I've added 
text, I've added uh, uh, image, I've added a video, I've added an interaction, and now let me go and add an activity. Uh, I want the learner to reflect on the learning and answer a question. So let's go and answer a question over here. So I'm going to show you how to create a uh, reflection uh, exercise using the user interactive components. So over here, uh, my reflection exercise is I want them to look at the options and choose uh, a good example for constructive feedback. So, um, so I would like this to be a radio group. So I'm going to select that option. And over here, uh, I only have two. So I can go to settings and increase the number of radio buttons I have over here. And then I'm going to add the text over here. So I'm just, I'm showing you how to configure a custom uh, interaction using user interactive components. So, um, so if you notice, we have templates for quiz slides. So this will create an additional slide separately. But if you want, uh, to include interactions where you you want the learner to select uh, and choose from some options over here, uh, you can use the user interactive components option to build these interactions. So uh, let's come and choose the content over here. So I'm adding it to the text. And uh, these are the uh, various options. I know that the distractors are dead giveaways because um, the correct answer is very well written and the other options are not, but uh, uh, you get the point and I'm sure you'll do a better job of finding distractors for these questions. So, um, so you can see over here, so in this exercise, I'm just showing you how to create a custom thing and provide feedback to the learner. So here I've created this uh, thing where the learners, um, uh, the options are there, and then I can go and configure the interaction for that specific uh, thing. But for the feedback, I'm going to add two additional uh, blocks, right? So I'm going to add a text block over here. So I'm going to say, correct and I'm going to give the feedback and then I'm going to add another text block uh, oops uh, here for the incorrect feedback so I'll, I'll, I'll show you how uh, I'm going to configure this so I do not want these blocks to appear when the page is loaded Right. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to click this gray area. I'm going to the slide interaction and I'm going to on the entry of the slide. I want to hide these two content sections. So I'm going to go to this content section here and I'm going to select the correct and the incorrect paragraphs and I'm going to click done. So those two feedback blocks are going to be hidden. They will only be displayed when the learner selects any of these options which are listed here. So how do I configure that? So let me go and select that particular block. And you can see uh, by selecting interactions, it shows me the interaction that I can configure, the custom interaction that I can configure for this particular uh, radio uh, group of radio buttons. So I'm going to go and select selection off and it is showing me all the various options. So I'm going to select the first one. So this is the correct option. So over here, I want to display the correct uh, 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 feedback that I had included. So I'm going to, uh, but before that, if any of the other incorrect um, options had been chosen and the, if the incorrect block was, I want to hide that. So I'm going to configure that behavior first. I'm going to go to the content section and I'm going to say hide the incorrect feedback. So I'm going to configure two things for each uh, selection of that. So I'm going to hide that paragraph and I can add another action. So here I'm now going to show the correct feedback. So for each of the options, I'm going to uh, configure two actions. One would be to 
hide the feedback which I do not want them to see and then uh, 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 show the one which I want them to see. So the first one, because it was the correct answer, I have hidden the incorrect uh, feedback and I've shown the correct feedback. Now for this, because this is an incorrect option, I'm going to hide the correct option, correct um, block, and I'm going to display or show the uh the incorrect feedback so in this particular case i'm going to think and i'm going to select incorrect i understand i'm i've come close to the end of our discussion here so i'm going to quickly uh, finish uh, doing this or i'm uh, i'm going to repeat it for uh, this i'm going to hide the correct content section content block and I'm going to show the incorrect the same thing here I'm going to hide the correct content section and I'm going to show the And this way, I've configured my reflection. And uh, similarly, uh, you know, I can add uh, a feedback, uh, uh, a certificate to this training. So let me just go and select from certificate over here. And uh, on the right hand side, this is a new function uh, feature which has been added in just the latest release. You can also enable the learner to download the certificate. So it will show an icon which will allow them to download it. So let's go and take a look at our course. So I'm going to go to preview. I'm going to delete this because my micro learning, I do not want to have a separate question slide. So I'm coming here. You can see I have the text, the image, I have the video, the learner can view it. And then, um, you know, you come to the widget that's there. And over here, now you can see that the feedback has been hidden. I'm going to select this. So which is going to show the feedback. Only thing is now I have to go and adjust because it's appearing down here. I want it to appear between the certificate and uh, so, so this is where you can see, you can just drag and move the blocks to the place where you want it to appear. So I'm going to um, review this again. And uh, over here, now when you select this, it shows me the correct. And now when I select this, it has hidden the correct block and it's showing me the incorrect block. So, you know, this should work. Uh, and so that's how you can add a, a custom interaction to your course. And you can see this is a certificate and there's this download option over here. So in the certificate, there are these variables, system-defined variables, which will populate. Uh, it'll take the uh, learner name from the LMS and display it. Uh, if you want to include a, in a, a field which will capture the learner's name uh, uh, in this form itself, you can use an input field to capture it. Uh, let me show you an example of a, a training feedback form that I had created earlier. Um, you can just uh, take a quick look at it and you can build it using these components on the left. So it's very similar. Uh, let me just uh, quickly show you uh, how I, I would add this. So this would be the user input field that you're seeing here. I've just changed the name, uh, uh, the label to name. And then again, I add another uh, user input field. Uh, and then this over here is the radio group. We just saw how you could add that. This is a drop down. So let me just show you how to go and add this drop down. So over here, when you click the drop down, it will uh, allow you to edit the content. So there are 
uh, three options here. You can increase or decrease the number of options, and you can just select it and reword the options that you want to include over here. And if you want to configure an interaction to it, you can just go to uh, the, uh, you, can, you have to select this and you have to go to uh, interactions here. And based on the selection of a specific option, you can define what action you want it to do. So this is how you can. So in this case, because it's feedback, uh, you may want to store it in a variable, which can then be communicated to the le learning management system. So in if you want the information to be passed on, you should go to reporting and say include in quiz. And over here, you don't want it to be scored, but you want it to be reported to the LMS. So you need to select these options. So this is how you can create training feedback forms where you can capture information from the learner and have it saved and stored on your learning management system. So you can see it's a combination of input fields, drop down field, radio groups, uh, check boxes uh, that I've used over here uh, to build out this training feedback form. I apologize for going five minutes uh, more, uh, and I just want to quickly come back to my slide and talk about some of the other options over here. So the accessible oh. <laughs> learning material, I just want to quickly show you where you can define that. So on the right-hand side, you have this icon for accessibility, and over here, this is where you define the accessibility text and specify the speech agent. So any component on the screen, if you select it, it takes you to that respective uh, setting for that component. In the, So you can see over here, even for uh, the input fields and uh, all the interactive components, uh, there are um, accessibility options you can define. And then um, that's it. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry for going. Uh, six minutes beyond at the time allocated for the session. I hope you found this useful. And uh, Gary, I know that I did not qualify for your prize of finishing it within. <laughs> <laughs> that's OK, Sheriff. We got six minutes smarter, and that's that's valuable to everybody here. We have a, a lot of questions, Sheriff, uh -huh. that have, you haven't had, had time to answer, and our team hasn't had time to answer. And I wonder if we can uh, post those questions along with some answers, uh, along with the recording, uh, so that uh, the folks here in the session, as well as the folks walking, watching the recording, can see what the answers to these questions are. Can we do that if I send these to you? Sure, absolutely. Okay. It's kind of hard to say no, isn't it? And I put you in a tough spot. Um, <laughs> with, so I do want to point out to everybody that the Adobe Learning World is coming up uh, May 7th to 8th. This is a virtual session, so you don't have to travel to uh, Las Vegas or Orlando or anywhere else. Uh, Sheriff, do you want to say something about uh, ALW? Or, um, yes, uh, sure, sure. Yes, we, we have two... Uh, 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 events in a year, uh, Adobe Learning World, which is our virtual conference. And then we have an in-person conference uh, in October, which is usually held in Vegas. So uh, folks around the world who can't make it to Vegas, I would encourage you highly. This is a free event. Uh, you can register. And there are lots of very uh, interesting topics. Uh, we will be having workshops where you will learn how to use Adobe Captivate. So if you're interested, if you're a newbie and you're interested in learning more, please join us. We have a, a huge uh, lineup of speakers uh, from the industry who will also be uh, discussing and presenting on thought leadership topics. So please join us for Adobe Learning World uh, to network, to interact with other folks from around the world uh, and uh, uh, attend this. It's it's free and uh, it, it's, it, it's it, you can see it, you can participate in it from your homes. So there's really no excuse for not coming in here. Uh, and uh, I, I think I think it's a great uh, opportunity for you to enhance and build your skills. And yes, another example of continuous learning. <laughs>
Wonderful. Well, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you for a great session. By the way, lots of enthusiasm for the new version of Adobe Captivate. And um, a couple of people were asking where they could get the presentation slide. If you look all the way down at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, right there next to the Help button, you will see this handout pod that I'm moving around, right? So you can just go ahead and download there. Um, <clears throat> and I want to remind everybody to go ahead and vote uh, in the Adobe, or pardon me, in the Training Mag Network Choice Awards uh, that you will see here. You can pop up and you will be able to vote for Adobe Captivate or any other uh, authoring tool or various other categories uh, if you like. You can click that red button, <clears throat> excuse me, right now. Well, that's my voice has gone to heck. <clears throat> uh, and you'll also be entered to win a hundred dollar U.S. Bank Visa gift card. So click the uh, click the vote now. These awards are only selected by you, the members. They are not uh, uh, the result of a sponsor paying a lot of money. Adobe does a lot of webinars with us, but there's that's no guarantee that they're going to be selected for an award. Usually they are because they have such superior products, but you can click that red button now and uh, please do because I'm going to move away from this. If you need it later on, you can let me know. Okay. And <clears throat> excuse me. And just a, a reminder here to go to the uh, Adobe to check out Adobe Learning World. Uh, register for that. You can click on that slide right there and you'll be able to do that. Sheriff, wonderful job. And, uh, and <laughs> we're looking forward to when you come back. Uh, which I should also show. So I'm going to go back to that. And I apologize to everybody for moving everything around so much. But I do want to show you when Sheriff is going to be back over in the left corner there. Uh, and she will be back on May 14th talking about accessibility and, and 508 compliance uh, in Adobe Captivate. So that's going to be really important. We have a number of webinars. Uh, uh, I've asked a lot of people to do um, to talk about uh, accessibility. Bello Cipriani has done some great sessions. So you should uh, probably, if you're interested in that, you should also go to the recordings in Training Mag Network and, uh, and just look up accessibility or 508 or something along those lines to see what, what else has been um, uh, presented there. And then don't miss Shara's session on May 14th. You can click the button to register now. <clears throat> so, Shara, uh, I think we've done all the damage we can do today. So uh, <laughs> we, will, uh, we are ready to go here. And, and thanks for giving everybody all this great information. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And if there are any unanswered questions, we'll get back to you with the answers. Um, and uh, Gary will help us uh, share it with you. Thank yep. you very much. All right. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, thank you again for coming. Take care.